press record. Do, do, do. That folder. <laughs> and we're recording. It's yeah, great. we are recording. Okay. Hi everyone, this is Killian and I'm a PM at Microsoft working on building Microsoft 365 artificial intelligence experiences. And today we have Paul from the Microsoft Windows AI platform team. Hello. And we're going to talk more about Windows machine learning and how you can use sessions and bindings within WinML. So thank you so much for joining us this morning, Paul. Thank you for having me. And we also have another special guest sitting in front of us. This is Rufus, who is a robot on the robot operating, running the robot operating system. And he has a spinning LiDAR radar you might see here. And then he also has a webcam. And so he's going to be helping us through this video, giving us a real life example of how we can use Windows machine learning. But before we jump into actually what Rufus is doing behind the scenes, Paul, could you talk a little bit about the nitty gritty of how we can evaluate models with Windows machine learning? Absolutely. So with Windows machine learning, you have a model. To run it, we're going to introduce the learning model session. And so let's jump over to our documentation. Perfect. And so with the learning model session class is going to be everything you need to actually run a model. And so I clicked on constructors over there on the right, and you can see we have two constructors. So the first constructor is how to create the session using the default device. Which is the CPU. CPU, that's right. And you have the option to use um, other devices because we do hardware acceleration, and you can specify a device. So, such as DirectX devices. Such as the DirectX devices. Bingo. We've been learning. <laughs> right. we got a lot of these good videos. <laughs> and so now you've got your session all constructed and you're set up. Let's do fun things. So I'm scrolling down here a little bit into the methods where you can see the evaluate method is kind of your main heavy lifting for what you would do with a model. You take your model and evaluate it. Wonderful. So we have this session object which we can call evaluate on. But in order to evaluate using this session object, what other inputs do we need? So glad you asked. And so we'll jump over here now to the evaluate method. And this introduces our next object. So we have a learning model binding. What is a binding? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so a binding is really a fancy thing to talk about how you work with the input and output features of your model. And so in order to do that, each feature has its name. Right, and each name of the input and output feature, you would then bind, thus the name, the binding, the actual memory that you want for your input and the actual memory that you want for your output. To do this, you use the learning model binding. We're going to jump over to the learning model binding to where it has a method, do, 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 the bind method. And so the bind method will let you connect them. Awesome. So before we jump into the Rufus example, can you explain the kinds of things we can bind using Windows Machine Learning? Absolutely. And so remember, what we're binding here is really features. And so we're going to jump over to be the and learn... features are the inputs and outputs of our machine learning model. The inputs and outputs okay. of our machine learning model. And so the different kinds of features are the learning model feature kind enumeration. Let's jump into the field, and you can see the four. We support image, map, sequence, and our favorite, Tensor. So let's go ahead and see which one of these Rufus is running in his code behind the scenes. Perfect. To the code. To the code. Okay. So as you can see here, what we talked about is in order to evaluate the model, we need to create a session object. Correct. So in line 193 here, you can see that we are creating the session with the device we specified, which is the CPU. CPU. And the device selection we talked a little bit more about in another video. But once we have this device selected, we can go ahead and create the session object to do all the fun binding. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll up to the section where we actually do these bindings. Yay. And so here we'll see the very first binding that we do is to the output of the model, which has got the name grid. And so you can see kind of the string there is just a name, grid. A grid. What is the grid representing? Maybe we need like a quick demonstration of what this grid yes. represents. Let's show Rufus. <laughs> and so now Rufus is in action. You might have seen him kind of moving back and forth. He's kind of swiveling right now, depending if we move. And magically. And these magic hands are going to bring a demonstration of what Rufus is doing right now. 
So you can actually see in the screen, Paul and I are being tracked by Rufus. Rufus is spinning to try to find the closest people object. Rufus is running the tiny YOLO model that takes in images from Rufus's webcam and returns to us a segmentation of object classification of people objects, and then we'll swivel to those people objects in real time. So that is a quick demo of Rufus and the wait in the making and the in action. In action. So jumping back to the code. Back to the code. To the code. Now we can see. So the grid is that blue box that you saw around it. That's the output. And so we can bind the buffer that we want that grid to go into. And now you scroll down a little bit more, we see where we bind the image, line 90. And so line 90 is where we're going to bind the input image that came from the camera to the model. Awesome. So I noticed that in order to bind the webcam image that Rufus is giving us, we have these lines in front of it. So in my own experimentation with Windows Machine Learning, I know that you can actually bind a video frame as input to a lot of what models are expecting. But in this case, I see that some tensorization is going on. Can you explain what's happening here? Yes. And so here we introduce the concept of a tensor. So what is a tensor, Paul? I'm so glad you asked. And so tensor is really just a fancy word for a multidimensional array. And so you'll have an array that can have n number of dimensions. Each dimension can be n sized. Okay. And it's kind of an array of things. What kind of things? Let's jump to the docs. And so now, in order to describe these, we've got the tensor kinds. And remember, we'll go back to the features because inputs and outputs are features, and a tensor is a feature. And so you can see on the tensor feature descriptor, it has a tensor kind. And it has the shape, which is its, um, the shape of its dimensions. Remember, it's a multidimensional array. So shape is the shape of the dimensions. And we were able to find the shape from using Netron as an analyzing tool, like we did with Roseanne in previous videos. <laughs> tensor kind, we jump over into the fields. And so now tensor kind, you can see it's a multidimensional array. Awesome. And there's a lot of uh, things that it can be an array of. An array of 16-bit ints, an array of 32-bit ints. It can actually be an array of floats. So now jumping back to Rufus's code, all the dots kind of connect. You can see the tensor that Rufus created is a tensor float. And so that vector float right there it's using creates the nice big buffer where it can put all of the image data in. Those three mem copies are really just copying all the blues and the greens and the reds to get the image in there. And then line 89 is where it creates the, oh, sorry, sorry uh, one above it, 89. Oh, you, you can see the tensor float. And so then that kind of uh, connects it to the documentation. That was the tensor float. Wonderful. So now we've, we've bound our image object after tensorizing it. And the very last step we have to evaluating the model is actually running evaluate on our session object after we've provided the bindings. Success. We did it. So we walked through an example with Rufus through these series of videos of how we can load a model, how we can actually list the feature descriptors in order to find out what we need during runtime if we need to have that information. We also know how to bind the inputs and outputs, these features that the model is expecting. And then we know how to call the evaluate function on the session object which has these bindings. So thank you Paul and Rufus for helping us give these demonstrations and a shout out to Roseanne. <laughs> and if you want to learn more about Windows Machine Learning, please head on over to aka.ms slash overview of WinML to learn more about Windows Machine Learning and to learn more about device selection, model loading, and all of the fun things you can do with these new APIs. See you later, guys. Thank you.